Hey, what is up guys, BoHD here. Hope you are doing well. Now, yesterday on May 18th, Google held their 2021 Google I.O. keynote, where they unveiled basically everything that they've been working on for the past year. And Google does a heck of a lot. They're not just like an advertising company or a software company. They have their tentacles touched in just about everything in the tech space. So that's why it was a two hour event that contained over a dozen noteworthy announcements. So I'm just gonna go ahead and expand on that and jump right into the first big announcement. And I think that the biggest announcement has to do with Android 12, although I'm a little bit biased because I am a smartphone enthusiast. Google didn't really reveal too much about Android 12 and like all the features that it will contain, but they did uh, reveal that the new mobile operating system will have a completely new design that they're calling Material U. But it's basically an expansion of the material design aesthetic Google's been working on uh, and actually first unveiled in 2014. So it consists of, of modern color palettes, you got flat icons and all new animations that flow together and have the same continuity. It really is all about continuity and that's especially true with this new design. So Material U will adjust its system colors based on the wallpaper that you have set on your lock screen or your home screens. Um, there are some redesigned icons and some all new redesigned quick settings. Widgets have also been updated and reskinned to make them appear more modern and just aesthetically pleasing. Everything has also been made smoother, faster, and yeah, just more modern. Google's VP of product management labeled this new design overhaul as the biggest design change in Android history. Um, though I wouldn't go that far. It's really just the material design you know and love, but on steroids and taken to the next level. I'm actually working on a separate video where I will show you Android 12 running on my Pixel 5, uh, which you can download if you have a Pixel device of your own. If it's relatively new, dating back to the Pixel 3, you should be eligible for this new public beta. Uh, but just keep in mind that it is a beta, so you can expect some bugs. You probably don't want to install it on like your daily driver smartphone, but um, if you're a risk taker, I guess go for it. And what's also cool this year is that if you do not have a Pixel device, but you have like a newer OnePlus 9 or OnePlus 9 Pro, you'll actually be able to download and install the beta this year, which is really cool. So you might wanna check that out. But I'll place a link in the description to download the Android 12 beta if you're interested. The next big announcement has to do with Google's wearable operating system, Wear OS, which is now just called Wear. Samsung's Tizen OS wearable operating system is being merged into a unified platform with Google called Wear. And some of the improvements as a result of this merger will include battery life improvements, 30% faster loading times for apps, and smoother animations. It will also help developers because they don't have to make apps for two separate wearable operating systems. But overall, I think this is a really good move because it breathes some new life into Google's wearable department because it's really been struggling to compete with the Apple Watch, which has pretty much dominated wearable electronics, um, excluding Fitbit trackers and exercise trackers. But even then, there's, there's definitely a lot of work that Google and Samsung have to do to catch up to the Apple Watch because software is definitely important, don't get me wrong, but so is hardware. And so that's where I'd really like to see um, Qualcomm really focus on their Wear processors, which have just fallen way behind the competition, way behind the hardware powering Apple Watch. Um, they've just always been on the back burner and don't really perform very well. But with that said, there's also less demand for non-Apple Watches, which makes it less of a priority for Qualcomm to, uh, to release these new wear processors. So it's kind of a catch 22, um, but uh, still, I think the unified wear operating system with Samsung, the, the partnership they have going on, is definitely a step in the right direction, in my opinion. I'm excited to see uh, the, the, the things that Apple and Samsung come up with next. Now, moving on to the other announcements, uh, there have been changes made to Google's various software, like Google Photos, which will now use artificial intelligence to animate your photos from just two still images to create this neat live effect. Furthermore, you'll be able to password protect various photos in Google Photos, and they won't appear when you're scrolling through the app. So it's perfect for those of you with an OnlyFans account. 
Now, password managers are all the rage right now. It's pretty much impossible to remember passwords for all the various sites we interact with uh, without these password managers. Um, Google's password manager is, is adding a pretty neat feature where it'll be able to change a password for a website right from inside the password manager itself. So you won't have to navigate to the website and go through the prompts yourself. Google will actually do that for you. And what's kind of cool is it actually is using um, the Google Duplex technology. This is like the same artificial intelligence that they came out with a couple of years ago that's able to call restaurants and actually book reservations for you. So they're using the same technology to uh, change passwords for you. So that's pretty cool. Um, and it should be coming to Chrome on Android in the coming months. So definitely stay tuned for that. Google also said that select Pixel and Samsung Galaxy smartphones will be able to work as digital car keys to unlock select vehicles. Um, the, the only vehicle I believe that will work with this feature right now is BMW. Um, and I, I honestly, I doubt that uh, many car manufacturers will implement this feature into their vehicles anytime soon, if at all. But it's still pretty neat. Definitely a cool little feature to, to show off at uh, the keynote. The last really big cool new thing that Google announced, in my opinion, was called Project Starline. This is basically a video booth from the future. It uses high resolution cameras and depth sensors to create a real time 3D model of a person that's sitting across from you, even when they're not actually there. So instead of the typical Zoom call where you're talking in front of a screen and there's like the awkward eye contact and whatnot, this uh, basically cr makes it so that it looks like the person you're talking to is physically in front of you. Now there is a lot of very special hardware that is required to pull this feat off. So you can't just expect to get an update and have it revolutionize your next Zoom call meeting. But uh, hey, they showed us a taste of what is to expect in the future. And that's just one of the things I really like about Google. Now there was a bunch of uh, smaller announcements and features shown off at the event. They did say that it's workspace suite of applications are being more interconnected, intertwined. So you don't have to really like leave the various uh, documents and services that you're working on to access other services, if that makes sense. Google showed a demo for its new AI that it's been working on. It's called Lambda and it stands for AI language model for dialogue applications. It really just basically shows the current state of AI. Uh, here's a little sample of it talking about Pluto. I'm so curious about you. I sense your excitement. Ask me anything. Tell me what I would see if I visited. You would get to see a massive canyon, some frozen icebergs, geysers, and some craters. It sounds beautiful. I assure you it is worth the trip. However, you need to bring your coat because it gets really cold. Now, Google said it's working on improving the skin tones of people that uh, its Pixel smartphones capture. Probably something we'll see more details about in the next Pixel event. Google Maps is getting a bunch of new features to make maps more informative. You'll be able to see different restaurants at different times of the day. You can see various landmarks if you're like visiting a new city, just doing a road trip or something. And it'll show you how busy a specific area of town is. There's also a new health tool that'll let you take a photo of a skin issue that you're having. And it'll use like artificial intelligence to help identify the, the skin condition and offer various information and treatment about it. But yeah, those are the biggest announcements made at Google I.O. 2021. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on the event in the comments down below. Did you watch it? Did you just watch recap videos like this one? Uh, what is your favorite announcement or upcoming feature? Let me know what you're thinking in the comment section below. As always, guys, I'm BoHD from Slash.TV. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you right back here in the next one. See ya.